8th grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit 5, Lesson 19, Estimating a Hemisphere. Problem number one. A baseball fits snugly inside a transparent display cube. The length of an edge of the cube is 2.9 inches. Is the baseball's volume greater than, less than, or equal to 2.9 to the third power cubic inches? Explain how you know. The baseball's volume is less than the cube's volume. The baseball fits inside the cube, and the cube's volume is 2.9 cubic inches. Since the cube's volume is 2.9 cubic inches, and the baseball fits inside the cube, the baseball's volume has to be less than the cube's volume. Problem number two from 8th grade unit 5 lesson 18. There are many possible cones with a height of 18 meters. Let R represent radius in meters and V represent volume in cubic meters. A. Write an equation that represents the volume, V, as a function of the radius, R. We can start with the formula for finding the volume of the cone, and that is V equals one-third times pi times R squared times H. They tell us that the height is 18 meters, so we can substitute the H with an 18. Now the equation reads V equals one-third pi R squared times 18. Remember, when multiplying, the order doesn't matter, so we can find one-third of 18. One-third of 18 is 6, so now the equation reads V equals 6 times pi R squared. This equation represents volume as a function of the radius, because the volume depends on the size of the radius. B. Complete this table for the function, giving three possible examples. Remember, we're going to use the equation V equals 6 times pi times R squared. So if the radius is 2, we'll substitute the R with a 2. Now it reads V equals 6 times pi times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, and the order doesn't matter, so we can do 6 times 4 times pi. Now the equation reads V equals 24 pi. When the radius is 2, the volume is 24 pi. For the next one, we'll use 4 as the radius. So the volume is going to be 1 3rd of 18, which is 6, times pi, times 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 6 times 16, times pi. When the radius is 4, the volume is 96 pi. Let's do one more. When the radius is 8, the equation would read... Volume equals one-third of 18, which is 6, times pi, times 8 squared. 8 squared is 8 times 8, or 64. Remember, the order doesn't matter in multiplication, so we can multiply 6 times 64, times pi. When the radius is 8, the volume is 384, times pi. C. If you double the radius of a cone, does the volume double? Explain how you know. The easiest way to tell is to look at the table. Let's look at the radius of 2 and double it. That becomes 4. Now let's look at the volume of the cone with a radius of 2. That's 24 times pi. And if you double 24 times pi, you'd have 48 times pi. But the volume of the cone with a radius of 4 is 96 times pi. And that's actually four times bigger than 24. When you double the radius of a cone, you quadruple the volume of the cone. D. Is the graph of this function a line? Explain how you know. The graph of this function is not a line because if you plot the three points from the table, they will not form a straight line. Problem number three. A hemisphere fits snugly inside a cylinder with a radius of six centimeters. A cone fits snugly inside the same hemisphere. A. What is the volume of the cylinder? On the right hand side, on the right hand side, there's a picture of a cylinder. In the middle, there's a picture of a sphere. So remember, this sphere fits snugly inside this cylinder. 
On the left hand side we have a cone and the rate and the cone fits snugly inside the sphere. That means that the radius of this cone has the same radius as the sphere. Remember the formula for the volume of a cylinder is V equals pi times R squared times height. And since the radius of the cylinder is 6, we can substitute the R with a 6. Since the radius of the sphere is 6, the height of that sphere is also 6. And since it fits snugly inside the cylinder, that means that the height of the cylinder must be 6. So we can substitute the H with a 6. Since the order doesn't matter in multiplication, we can multiply the 6 squared, or 6 times 6, times 6. That gives us 216. So the equation now reads, the volume equals 216 pi centimeters cubed. B. What is the volume of the cone? The volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder with the same radius and the same height. So the formula is volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times height. So the volume of this cone is going to be one-third of 216 times pi centimeters cubed. And one-third of 216 is 72. So the volume of this cone is 72 times pi centimeters cubed. C. Estimate the volume of the hemisphere by calculating the average of the volume of the cylinder and the cone. To find the average, we'll just add 216 plus 72, and that's 288. 288 divided by 2 is 144. So the estimated volume of the sphere is 144 centimeters cubed. Problem number 4. A. Find the hemisphere's diameter if its radius is 6 centimeters. The radius is the distance from the center outwards. The diameter goes straight across the circle through the center. If its radius is 6 centimeters, then the diameter is going to be 12 centimeters. B. Find the hemisphere's diameter if its radius is 1,000 over 3 meters. Double the radius is 2,000 over 3 meters. So the diameter would be 2,000 over 3 meters. C. Find the hemisphere's diameter if its radius is 9.008 feet. Double the radius is 2 times 9.008, and that equals 18.016 feet. So the diameter is 18.016 feet. D. Find the hemisphere's radius if its diameter is 6 centimeters. The radius is half the diameter. If the diameter is 6 centimeters, then the radius is 3 centimeters. E. Find the hemisphere's radius if its diameter is 1,000 over 3 meters. The radius is half the diameter. If the diameter is 1,000 over 3, then half of 1,000 over 3 is 500 over 3. The radius would be 500 over 3 meters. F. Find the hemisphere's radius if its diameter is 9.008 feet. The radius is half the diameter. Half of 9.008 is 4.504. The radius is 4.504 feet. Problem number 5 from 8th grade Unit 5 Lesson 9. After almost running out of space on her phone, Elena checks with a couple of friends who have the same phone to see how many pictures they have on their phones and how much memory they take up. The results are shown in the table. A. Could this information be reasonably modeled with a linear function? Explain your reasoning. To get the unit rate, divide 8072 by 2523. Since the number of photos divided by the memory used equals 3.2 in all three situations, then yes, this is a linear function. The constant of proportionality is 3.2. So you need 3.2 megabytes to have one photo. The rate of change is 3.2, and that is the slope for a linear function. 
We can write the equation as m equals 3.2p. b. Elena needs to delete photos to create 1,200 megabytes of space. Estimate the number of photos she should delete. This is where we can use the equation m equals 3.2p. Substitute 1,200 for m and it reads 1,200 equals 3.2p. Divide both sides by 3.2. 375 equals 1p. She needs to delete about 375 photos to create 1,200 megabytes of space.